All right, all right, all right. What is up, everybody? How's everybody doing on this fantastic Tuesday morning? We are going to be taking a look at some assets. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are not, welcome back. This is the official Trade Talk channel where I show you how I analyze price for the most consistent and higher probable entries to help you all become better traders. We will be looking at Bitcoin, at the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones Industrial Index, and pretty much anything and everything that you want to take a look at. Currently, we do have Bitcoin breaking out, uh, going to the moon. Has been all week uh, since the first of the year. It's literally been on a one-way mission to mars uh we will see though if eventually we do get a pullback uh, on the current exchange that i mainly pay attention to which is coinbase's exchange we still have not liquidated the quarter so if i pull this line up right there Here, let's just do this as there is no confusion. There you go. All right, so this line that is marked out uh, weekly res, that is Q4's high. <clears throat> Q4 of 2022, as you have a brand new quarter. Now, I do understand that on some exchanges, this has already taken place. All right, but I watch this exchange, okay? So I don't really make these. This is the chart that I use to chart. This is the chart that I use to take positions. I take positions on BitGet, so I'm not even using BitGet's data. I use this data to make my trading decisions. And as of right now, you have yet to take out Q for 2022's high which in my opinion remains the bullish target it does look like that is what the markets are aiming for um i do expect a pullback from up here it, markets don't just go in one straight direction forever however with that being said if this is a short squeeze then they can last for days Remember GameStop, you know what I'm saying? When people were like, this stock was trading for like two bucks, now it's 300. You know what I'm saying? It, it can happen. You can definitely get squeezes that last a long time. It just depends on how many shorts are being liquidated and if they continue to try to short it or not. That's what determines the length and as far as that goes, the height of any short squeeze. So, yeah, Bitcoin can continue to go up, but we are expecting or looking for a pullback. That way we can buy more. We are under the, uh, we here at this channel believe that, you know, there is a slight possibility that the lows are in. We have been expecting risk or the correlation to risk to come back since the FTX debacle. If you remember, Bitcoin and the S&P 500 were trading very similar to one another, not an exact correlation, not a one-to-one, -one, but very similar to one another until the FTX thing happened. Once the FTX thing happened, Bitcoin lost that correlation to risk. Essentially, we had a massive move lower on Bitcoin through the exact same week that happened. We had a pretty damn big move to the upside on risk. So it caught everybody by surprise. Uh, the tweets were memeing all across Twitter about how they're finally Bitcoin has lost its correlation to risk on and that's not true. It's just liquidations. Liquidations propel price. That's what moves the markets. 
All right, the market's always in search for supply or demand. And when it has more than the other or one is more aggressive than the other, price will move away. It will aggregate in the opposite direction and search for the opposite of that or to that effect, something like that. Anyways, moving on. So right now we currently have Bitcoin testing daily support or well, not right now, but today we had Bitcoin testing a daily support. This right here is your only daily support all the way down to there. 16,933. That's the only bearish closing day you've had since Saturday, the 7th of January, 2023. And you can see how you have not closed the daily candle under that price yet. Therefore, objectively, that is support. Today, you have already tested that level on a move lower. That's what this downside wick is that indicates that price opened here last night. And at some point inside of this daily range, price aggregated lower, tested daily support. And now you're trading up at the high of day. Um, if we go into the intraday chart, you can see that take place right there. All right. And that just also happens to be the open of the day. The daily open on Bitcoin is at 1900 hours so apologies uh it was the very next candle there's your daily open so for the first hour of the daily open you traded up and you came back down second hour later into the day boom you tested daily support and you can see that that threw a pretty nice size wick to the downside created intraday support and since that intraday support has or was made, you are making higher intraday supports. Meanwhile, you are taking out intraday resistances. So this would be intraday resistance. There is the close above. Then you would move it up. This support here did not close below this candle. So... That is a support test and expansion. Close above. Therefore, you just keep moving. You can see what's, what's transpiring. Your daily range is currently bullish, moving higher. So basically, what I've done this morning, since this is the daily open, um, if you take your volume session volume profile which just shows where the most volume has traded inside of the daily range you can see that that is pretty much right in the middle of the day so when that when that occurs there is no like really um like strong emphasis on any particular market direction uh how much volume trades at a specific price is not a uh it's not something that we look for to get a a directional bias but it can sometimes help you with a directional bias for instance notice how the point of control which is where the most volume traded that at that price during that day is down near the daily low or the lower two-thirds of the daily range therefore you know when you close big strong bullish candles above it then typically you're wanting to look for any support tests to get long this morning i have taken a very small intraday scalp very tight risk because i was simply watching this demand zone since this is the daily open, since the point of control is currently under the daily open, it is suggestive that you would see higher prices. So basically on this push lower, I took a long position. That low is my risk. All right. 
my strategy i mean if you're new you're you're going to see that we get some really good entries with very tight risk to reward and it's by design all right here let me get it off that well let's just make a new one because this piece of junk wants to just play games um, but you can see here it was something like this right so i don't need price to move very far in order to get a two to one risk to reward now before this candle was even made i took the entry and this was my target so boom if you look right there to the right of the chart you're going to see that that was a three to one risk to reward now i have already booked profits and i have my stop move to break even that is simply so now i cannot lose money on the trade well i can lose money on the trade i can lose any unrealized profits but the profits that have been realized have already gave the account or the overall p l a boost to the upside nobody knows what price is going to do ever 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 i have been getting bombarded lately with tweets of people asking me if i believe the top is in or i mean if the bottom is in or if we're going to see new bear market lows because big twitter accounts when i say big twitter accounts i just simply mean people with more than a hundred thousand followers those people have opinions and you know people they listen to those opinions and they take positions based on those opinions and they get wrecked and then they want to blame that creator or that entertainer or whatever you want to call them because 90 percent of them aren't even traders 90 percent of those people are salesmen they're internet marketers they do not trade I trade. I trade for a living. This is my job. I am at my desk right now, the trading desk. I am broadcasting live from that location. That location is in my home. <laughs> All right? I work from home. This is what I do. So I have already been paid for the day's work, my daily task of coming to the desk looking for opportunities finding opportunity taking the position and then managing risk based on the opportunity is complete so i'm done for the day i can now go do whatever i want for the rest of the day that is the freedom that trading provides did i know that price was going to go up when i took the entry absolutely not i do not have a crystal ball nobody knows what price will do and i don't know how many times i have to stress that um so let's let's do this real quick sorry uh about you know coming out blasting like this it's just it it really really drives me crazy um and, and totally ga i really hope you're here at the live stream this morning hey anyone can you send me a link where he did place a bet because of this tweet claiming my answer to everybody's question do you think the low is in what they want from me is a yes or no so that way if a new low is created, they can then come back and rub my face in the fact that a new low is made. When in reality, nobody knows if the low is in or not. That's not how trading works. Trading works off of probabilities and strategies that have been created over time to find the best opportunities to apply risk into the markets for a chance to potentially 
make a better realized gain. Yes, you can call it a bet if you want a gamble. Essentially, that's what investing is. You are gambling that this company that you're going to invest your money in is going to be doing better in the future than it is right now. That way, you can see a return on your investment. Any investment that you make, whether you're investing in into buildings, whether you're investing in the real estate, whether you're investing in the stocks, options, bonds, gold, silver, whether you're investing in your child's future, whatever you're putting money towards to invest in is a risk. You are risking that money. That's what it is. That's what we do, right? Investors, most of them fail at this because they think in their minds that there is something out there that's going to tell them definitively if they're going to make money or not. And that's not how it works. Nobody knows the answer. Nobody. And you should never be taking positions based on what some internet marketer says. I am not an internet marketer because I am not selling you anything. I have no courses for sale, nothing like that. I am not DMing you, asking you to come join my Discord or anything like that, all right? I have a public or a private Discord that is set up on donation basis alone based on the info I provide. If you find value and you want to have access to ask me questions 24-7, well then, yeah, I charge you less than a dollar a day for that because, you know, you're, you're asking me questions 24-7. I should get at least a cup of coffee for that, right? <laughs> but I'm not, this isn't a business. Those other people are in a business, so be careful who you trust and who you listen to out there, guys, and make sure that the person that you're following is actually a trader. Make sure that they show you positions that they are in or that they have taken, all right? I can simply do that at any point in time. This is a legit open position on the USD JPY, all right? That is the short that I took. I took it based on a technical thing that happened in the markets that we look for constantly, right? That's what I took the position on. Um, let me see here. Wow, Bitcoin did just take that out and look at the rejection it is now getting. Yeah, that's what we were waiting on right there. Now you can potentially look for shorts if this continues to fall like this. This isn't a massive rejection, but it's a pretty big one, right? Look at the wick on the hourly. You clearly finally took out that level. Remember, that was that quarterly level. I can get my internet to focus here. <clears throat> Come on, focus, focus, focus. Let's go. I have too much shit up. Here we go. There it is. There's your wick above right there. So it's only natural that you're going to get a reaction like this because people take profits. This was the bullish target for a lot of investors. Now that you've taken out that quarter high, now we can look for a pullback on Bitcoin, right? Because the next liquidation point on Bitcoin is all the way up there, $25,000. So now that we've liquidated that, I expect a pullback. This is why you do not buy the tops of these marketplaces. This is why you wait on support. Um, 
there was one other person that I wanted to look at real quick because, like, they said something very strange. Like, well, you didn't say that was the low when you took the entry. Well, here, let's just do it like this. Let's just do it like this. Now, I'm not picking on you guys. These are legitimate questions, and I'm assuming that you just don't understand the markets. And it's good that you're here, and it's good that you're asking questions, and it's good that you're doing this because now you can learn, right? My main goal is to teach you how to analyze price the right way so that way you can make better decisions on where you take risks. All right, because that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be entering money into the open market, taking a risk. That market's going to be directional from where you've taken that risk. That Bitcoin position you took, because this guy right here, um, not that guy, right here, can you send me a link where he placed the bet? I don't know if he even thinks that I did it or not. If it's even if it even happened, this person actually must have seen it happen because they said that Bitcoin position you took you didn't say it was the bottom when you purchased. That's because I don't know. <laughs> I can't see into the future, so I can't say yo. I'm buying the bottom of Bitcoin because this is the bottom. Why? Uh, because some hammer head and shoulders banana peel ultra lightning method technique that I invented has an indicator that says that this is the bottom. Therefore, it will be the bottom. There is nothing like that. Nothing exists in the world. That can tell you if something is the bottom or not. We have been bullish on Bitcoin ever since Bitcoin became undervalued. There's a difference between overvalued and undervalued. When Bitcoin is trading at overvalued or overbought regions, you typically don't want to be a buyer there because professional investors are taking profits they are selling their bags to you, the retail investor, because you have FOMO and you want to get in because you want to get rich today, right? And they know that. So they're selling on the way up as you are buying on the way up. Therefore, you are losing money and they are making money. You just need to change your mindset a little bit and start doing what I'm doing, doing what they're doing. We have had a bullish bias on Bitcoin since this happened right here. Now you can see, was that the low? No, it was not. You made a fresh low over here with the FTX debacle. But yeah, over here, we changed our bias from bearish to bullish simply based on this one indicator. This indicator basically just lets you know what is undervalued and what is overvalued. There is another indicator that is very popular among investors called the RSI. And on the weekly time frame, the RSI has done a very good job in Bitcoin's historical data of finding the bottoms. Here you can see back in 2018, when Bitcoin hit oversold on the RSI, it in fact was the bottom. Now, when people bought that, did they know that was the bottom? No, they did not. They were simply buying it because now Bitcoin has value. 
it is cheaper than it was before. So they're buying it now in hopes that eventually the price will go up and they will be able to sell it for a profit. That's how investing works. Here you can see in its entire history, when you have hit oversold regions on the RSI, it has historically been a good place to switch at least at the very minimum quit being a seller and start to look to be a buyer now obviously we discussed that when we hit oversold over here as a matter of fact i have a video that goes over it in depth this was the most oversold bitcoin had ever gotten ever 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 in its entire history so you can damn well believe that I'm buying some Bitcoin then because it's the most oversold it's ever freaking been. So yeah, I do expect price to go up from here, but I don't know that it will. It's just an expectation of mine. It's a hope, if you will. Now, hope isn't a strategy. I have other things that make up my strategy, but as far as buying and selling Bitcoin, if you only look at the weekly RSI, you will get much better at picking areas to be a buyer. A lot of people, retail loves to be a seller down here because retail loves to miss the entire move then retail loves to listen to these professionals on Twitter that claim to be professionals talk about how it's oversold, momentum's really bad, so it can remain oversold longer than you can remain solvent, and all these little cliched punchlines. But when in reality, this is when you want to change that short bias because this has already occurred. And remember, this is a weekly time frame. So Bitcoin was literally in a year-long downtrend. Why would you think that you can get more money on a sell down here? If an asset loses literally 75 to 80% of its value, why are you still a seller? That means the asset is in fact on sale. If you look at Bitcoin as a pair of blue jeans, for instance, or let's say a Sony PS5, do you want to buy it when it's in such high demand that it's at the highest prices it's ever been in its life? Or do you want to wait for the thing to go on sale and then buy it? Naturally, you want to buy it when it's on sale. So we were we switched our bearish bias to here, right? Right here. So we, we've had a bullish bias on this channel since we came into this, okay? Now, we have obviously taken, uh, we have obviously been stopped out of positions down here looking for longs because of FTX. However, on that same very day, we made money on a short trade, but it was only a day trade. So this channel basically focuses on day trading, but tries to get you into day trading positions that can ultimately end up being investments, right? That's the goal. So we make money whether Bitcoin's going up or down. I don't care if Bitcoin goes to zero. I will sell it all the way to zero if that's what it wants to do. But it's not going to go to zero unless there is a major fundamentally, uh, a major fundamental something wrong with the program, the code, or whatever. Something flawed severely. That's the only way I would be looking to short Bitcoin. This little bit of inflation that the Fed is fighting is not enough to cause an 08 recession. Uh, or an 08 type style market crash. We never thought that we were going to see an 08 style market crash. 
we were preparing for it just in case it happened, but we didn't think it was going to happen. And it hasn't happened yet. And while everybody's looking to be a seller here, we were looking to be a buyer. So this position was purchased on a liquidity break style strategy. If one of my mods would be so kind as to drop that link into the description for you brand new folks out there, you can watch the video. It's literally five minutes and it goes in depth teaching you how to deploy that strategy. Essentially, all I'm doing is waiting for a high-risk news event, CPI, FOMC, NFP, stuff like that, to basically liquidate the market. So once the lows get liquidated, we wait for the liquidation, then we buy it. But we only do that on high news events, right? So we ticked the low. We got in on the low tick of Bitcoin with a purchase. Did I know that was going to be the low? Of course not. No one knows what's ever going to happen in the future. But based on my strategy, based on probabilities, based on experience and a lot of other things, I decided to get long there. It was also the very same. Well, it wasn't the same day that I took the short trade on the Japanese yen us dollar japanese yen but i have a bearish bias on that asset so i shorted it at the top right there is the open position all right that is a real live open position that is it that is where i hit this little red button that says sell, boom, right there, okay? Uh, I don't know why my internet is on the fritz, but it is on the fritz. Let me see what is going on over here. Also, I've noticed this on TradingView lately where it's been doing this weird glitchy thing like this, where it just goes away and comes back well anyways we started to get short the dollar because of data that we knew that was happening in front of us that data was cpi we knew that cpi was trending lower and back when cpi hit the highest rate ever of nine point not ever but for the last 50 or 60 years of 9.1 we basically said that if the when the Fed starts aggressively hiking rates, naturally it's going to cause bullish pressure on the dollar. Then you got the bullish pressure. But once CPI starts to trend lower, that will basically give investors um, hope that what the Fed is doing is actually working and then they will start rotating that capital back out of the dollar and back into those riskier assets because they make better money quicker. They're riskier, but they're high beta. That means you know that that, that small por portion of the portfolio that they have in high risk assets generally will outperform in a bull market than you know your slower AT and T style type of stocks. That takes, you know, six months to move one dollar, right? But you can see the dollar had a blow off top there. We're short at the high. We're long on Bitcoin at the lows. There is no reason or any point in changing that up. Maybe if I close this, let me close down a few programs. Close down some tabs. The hell is going on here? Because there is no refresh button on this. So let's do it like this. And maybe you're back. That's quick. 
All right. So let me let me go back to the to the to the old school style and do this via tab on Google if I can. I'm not dropping any frames and the internet looks good, so something else is up here. Just give me a second, guys. All right, let me close down Discord. Let me close down literally everything. I don't think that's going to help it because this is what it does. Or what it has been doing lately. It's more or less trading view and not the internet. Trading view just keeps resetting itself. All right. So, anyways, um, I'm what you call a price analyst. All right. I do not, I am not a uh, macro fundamental data driven expert. I am a price action candlestick data driven expert one of the foremost in the public space today now that is not cnbc's uh title for me that is my title for me <laughs> and it's not because i'm cocky or arrogant or anything like that it's just the simple facts of life right when you're constantly nailing macro tops and macro bottoms quicker and faster than data-driven individuals, than the macro guys, then obviously you have a clear sight or a picture on what price is actually doing. That is what I do. I analyze price and price alone. That's why you don't see MACDs and, and, and all these indicators on my charts. I use moving averages and I use an RSI. That's pretty much it. And neither one of those do I use to take positions. I only use those to show me what um, RSI has developed for is to show you the relative strength in the move. It is what's called a momentum oscillator. It shows you the momentum of the, um, of the aggregation right because price aggregates it, it can't move price isn't a physical thing it's not a ball you can't push it around like people think you can right it's it's not it aggregates it goes up and down based on supply dynamics so it will aggregate up or it will aggregate down and that oscillator just simply shows you the pace at which it was aggregating. It is a lagging indicator, all right? Um, but there are some things that people look for on the lagging indicator to help them get a, a basic idea of generally what is going on. I posted a couple months ago, back in November, I was making fun of the movie The Sixth Sense, where the little boy says, I see dead people right? Well, that was the tweet. I just simply said, I see divergence, all right? I don't make trades based on divergence, but you can clearly see on the weekly that Bitcoin was oversold and it made a higher low on the momentum oscillator, even though price made a fresh low and a very aggressive move lower, the oscillator showed you that it wasn't aggressive enough to take out this momentum low. So that's called divergence. Occasionally, divergences work. At the very least, if there's weekly divergence on the RSI, you need to at least pay attention to it. Now, since we have traded all the way back up to where the gains were lost from FTX, we're right back there. That means that 
the repricing getting back to the correlation to risk is happening right before our eyes. Basically, I told everybody not too long ago, that's what we were expecting to happen. If no other black swan events happen, like any other exchanges collapse or any massive Bitcoin whales that that hold a significant portion of Bitcoin, as long as nobody else has to liquidate billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, I think this right here would have been your capitulation, right? Because we have on-chain data that suggests the capitulation has already happened. And I've told you that as well. I basically told you two days or one day before I bought here that I was going to be buying here. And the reason was simple because it's the first day of the year, right? Those were my exact words. I'm going to buy Bitcoin because it's the first day of the year. There is the first day of the year, Sunday 01 Jan 23. So this is the first, very first day of 2023. And you can see here a clear daily support. All right. So if you're following this channel, you know that's daily support. That's where I bought it. 16,531 daily support. Did I know that it was going to rocket ship up to the moon like that after I bought it? No, I did not. Did I know I was going to even make money buying it there? No, I did not. Because the last two days were bearish. This right here could be the bearish target. This swing low. Because it didn't take out that low. So if the market was pushing down, looking to liquidate this, then clearly I would have been stopped out of that position. But that's not what happened. What happened was people said the same thing I did. You know what? Screw it. For my New Year's resolution, I'm going to buy Bitcoin this year on the first day of the year. Because naturally... There is a lot of demand that came into the market really, really quickly. And you do not see the same aggression on risk assets. Because this is the repricing of correlation coming back. That's why it done that, in my opinion. You can see now you are massively overbought on the daily time frame. So you definitely do not want to be a buyer up here. You wanted to be a buyer down here. But down here you were bearish. I know. I know. I used to be one of you. <laughs> I used to be where you are. Right? I used to be where you are. It's very simple. All you got to do is stop doing what you're doing now and start doing the opposite and you'll start making money. That's not exactly true. Let me take that back. You have to change a few things. You need a strategy. You need to understand when and where you're going to be a buyer. Why are you buying it? Is there value to be a buyer there? Is there value? Do you see value in it? Are you afraid of it still? I mean, there's a lot of things that go that go in this investing thing, right? It's it's not as easy as just looking at a candlestick chart and saying, well, this isn't a capitulation candle. Well, I beg to differ because if you pull up a two-day chart, this big green candle right here, is going to make this candle have a massive wick to the downside, right? It's just based on how you approach the market, what time frame you're looking at. I could be completely wrong about that, but let's see. There it is. Boom. 
boom shakalaka or booyaka or whatever word you want to use for capitulation. That's what a capitulation candle looks like, all right? That's what everybody is looking for when they're looking for capitulation, a great big gigantic move to the downside with a big fat wick on the bottom of the candle. All you had to do is switch it to a two day and you can see it. There was capitulation there. That is a dead cat bounce. This is something else entirely. This right here is a bottoming formation. You come in, then you liquidate this low, take out any early buyers that are too aggressive here. Boom, done it, check, mark, buy it. We're in, we're good, we hold it. Then price goes up, sets a high. Then it comes back in and sets support, creates a bear trap right here, and then goes to the opposite direction. Classic, classic price action. Simple stuff. Simple stuff. Like, it's just candlestick data, right? That's all it is, candlestick data. So, if you want to be bullish on Bitcoin, there's an easy metric you can follow. As long as you're trading above the yearly open, then on the yearly time frame or on the yearly candle, you're bullish. That means if you're trading above the yearly open, your 12-month candle or your yearly candle is going to be green. And it is currently, right? Don't get too caught up into what happened here or here or here or here or here because that's in the past. We're looking for future movements and price, not past movements because Past movements can't do anything for our P&L, right? I can't look at this and be like, well, it's definitely going lower because look at that candle. When in reality, if you just pull it out, I could say, well, this is definitely going up from here because any other time it did this, it went up, right? It's just, it just depends on how you look at it. Just looking at price is subjective but price closures is not so we focus on objective things and then we focus on a few other metrics and 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 we've developed a very fine strategy from that and that strategy is freely given all you got to do is start watching the videos as I go through the strategy in depth, and it is very consistent. I didn't change anything. There is no trade talk 2.0. There's nothing like that. What I started on the very first day of this channel is the same thing that I am teaching today, and I've been doing it for two years. Very, very consistent. Very consistent. And consistency is the key to profitability. Consistency. You can't trade head and shoulders and, and descending wedges and rising wedges and cups and handles and lightning bolt situations and, and three drive topping formations and dojis and hammers and, and oscillators and moving averages and MACDs and be consistent. Because each one of those things I just mentioned are all different. So therefore, you're taking entries based on different dynamics. That is not consistency. Consistency is taking entries based on the same thing over and over and over again. That is when you will reach profitability. Because once you become consistent, then you can work out the kinks of your strategy Figure out what times are best to look for entries, what times are not. We know that the best time to trade the New York session because of probabilities, because of analytics, because of statistics is from 7 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning. So you shouldn't be trading at all. You shouldn't be entering any positions at all after 11 o'clock in the morning. You should be done. You should be done trading by 11 o'clock 
because by 11 o'clock, the majority of the volume of the whole entire day has already happened. It happens close to the open, like an hour before and an hour after. So there's like a three hour window there. You get three opens every single day. Got the Asian session, London session, New York session. Right now we are in the New York session. So you got another hour or so you could potentially look for moves. The reason I say that is because once the bulk or the majority of the volume comes in, then your the rest of your day will be a either a trending day or it will be an inside day. If it's a trending day, then, then the trend is likely to continue. Currently, we have taken out that high, but you still closed above resistance. That's important, right? There's resistance. Although that was a very aggressive candle, the reason it was aggressive is because of how many orders were literally setting up there to take profits then you have new breakout buying traders up there that just lost a lot of money. You got people that were waiting for that to happen so they could jump into an, a new short position. Like there's a thousand reasons why there would have been a ton of orders up there. And that is why you got such a volatile move after. But that is also why we were targeting that price, right? I took profits the day of... CPI. So when I made my money on this move up was then. That's basically when I booked PL, when I booked profits off the actual trade. Now I am still holding a smaller portion of those positions because if I'm right, if this is the going to be the low then, you know, maybe a year or two from now, Bitcoin's trading at 35 grand. If I bought it at 16,530, I'm sitting pretty. I've doubled the account, all right? Or doubled the investment. That's how it works. There's no way to know if that's going to happen, unfortunately. You just have to learn where are the better places to look for, for taking those opportunities and that is exactly what you're going to learn on this channel, okay? I can't teach you what price is going to do, but I can teach you where you should look for opportunities. That's what I'm going to help you with, teaching you to identify a possible opportunity. It does not mean it's going to work out every time. It just means you will have a, a little bit better understanding of when you should be applying risk at all. And right now is not the time for it. I think we should wait. I think we should wait for support. There are a few prices uh, that we got our eyes on, but we can't do anything until Bitcoin at least gets to them. <laughs> right? Uh, the only bearish closing day that we have right now is there. And that support, until you close a daily candle under it, is still going to be support. As of right now, this is the only day since January the 1st that you've made a lower close. Well, no, I lied. There's a day on the 5th, and there's a day on the 7th. So here's your first. You've only had three bearish days. So that means price closed lower than it opened on that day. That's what a bearish means. Bearish doesn't exactly mean anything bad. It just means it closed lower than it opened. That's it. That's the technical term for what bearish is. Closed lower than it opened. Bullish is the opposite. It closed higher than it opened doesn't necessarily mean anything good or bad. That's just what it is. Sounds like today is just going to be a nasty rant session. But these rant sessions have to happen sometimes because people just, they, 
I don't know what they're looking for. I guess they're looking for a, a trading Jesus to come along and hell marry everybody into riches and fortune. And that's not going to happen ever. Um, so yeah, what I would probably do if you're, if, if you're in an oversold market, that's clearly showing signs of potential reversal and, and you're following a dude or a female that's telling you that we're going to 10 K or five K is hit the unfollow button. That's what you should do, right? Someone, if you got an asset, that's already lost most of its value. And they're telling you to look for new short opportunities. Stop following that person. That person is clearly wrong, especially on an asset that historically has been bullish since day one. And Bitcoin has historically been bullish since day one with a couple periods of, you know, minor bear markets. Yeah, you lost big portions of value, but they only lasted for a small time. If you calculate the amount of time that Bitcoin's been a traded asset, you can clearly see a trend here. And that trend is up. So you typically want to be a buyer on it. The only time you want to be a, a massive bear on an asset is when it does that. All right. If you're looking at an asset that is trending this way from inception to now, then you want to be a seller, right? You want to sell swing highs because it's clearly what? Trending lower. Then you want to sell it because something's wrong because investors see no value. They, they, they see no value, right? They see nothing there. So they're, they're just clearly waiting for prices to get up. So that way they can sell it again. All right. This asset clearly bullish. Now, if you, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Clearly bullish. Most of the time it spends more time going up than it does going down. Therefore we want to be buyers at what price? Well, that's going to be up to you. Where do you see value? When is something off enough for you to want to purchase it? Do you like buying stuff when it's 50% off, 40% off, 70% off? Whenever you like to buy stuff that's on sale, that's when you should start looking to buy it. Just make sure you're managing your risk by using stop losses, for instance. That's how we do it. That's how you should do it. If I knew what price was going to do, I would never need to use a stop loss. So that is the easiest way to identify if your favorite trader knows what price is going to do or not. Do they have or do they use stop losses? If the answer to that question is yes, then that means they do not know what price is going to do. That their 25 or 50 years of experience in the marketplace still has not taught them how to identify exactly what price is going to do. Otherwise, they would not need to use stops. Inner Circle Trader, one of the biggest ones out there that claims that he knows exactly what the market's going to do, but he still uses stops. Therefore, he does not know what the market's going to do. Does he have a high consistent rate of making profitable trades? Yep, according to him, he does. So awesome. You know what I'm saying? That's perfect but he still doesn't know what price is going to do. Nobody does. Not me, not him, not nobody. All right. Once you understand that concept, then you can start making better decisions 
on where you want to invest your money. I would not go 100x long on Bitcoin while it's massively overbought, just like I would not go 100x short on Bitcoin when it's massively oversold. So this is what we're doing. We are waiting for a pullback. This could take time. Let's just look at historical data and go back in time and see what happened last time. Bitcoin's bull market cycle topped out and had a bear market cycle, which was 2017 into 2018. You had a bear market cycle here in 2018, where this is a weekly chart, by the way. Each candle represents one week's worth of price action. You can see that it, over a period of time, it had a bearish cycle. But then when it found the lows, what did it do? It printed a massive upside candle. This candle itself not that candle, this candle right here was 30%. That was a 30% weekly candle. And then over here, you were very, very slow. But then you printed this baby right here. Boom. 31% up. So that pretty much signified the end of the bear market for Bitcoin. You can see that with historical data, but count the weeks that it took to do it. So this living second to second type of stuff is uncalled for in investing because it takes time. It took 15 weeks for this to be pretty much the low. Now, one thing Bitcoin has never done in, in its entire history is ever revisited a bear market low. But it never revisited an old bull market high either in the past. It did that this year or last year. So there is a first time for every, anything and everything. There are black or, uh, you know, black swan events out there. That can absolutely happen. Nobody knows what, what the future holds. Like if Russia decides to launch a nuclear warhead, for instance, at whoever, that's probably going to cause the market to go down. And nobody knows if that's going to happen or not. God hopes and for hopefully that never happens, but we don't know. But if you look at this, right, you have pretty much the same thing you have a massive down candle then a formation of really small range sideways candles and then last week was the first time since the bear market started that you got a candle that was bigger than that 24 percent right the last time you had a 24 percent or larger candle was over here at, you know, roughly the top. I think it's this one, if I ain't mistaken. Yeah, 25%. So since March of 2021, this is the biggest bullish weekly close Bitcoin has had. So since the bull market, since the top of the bull market, this is the biggest candle. And historical data shows us that that's typically a pretty damn good sign. So we can wait another few weeks, up to 15 weeks, in fact, for Bitcoin to trade sideways to down, sideways to down, sideways to down, until it finds enough support and enough buyers to give us another rather large expansion. At that point, I believe, in my humble opinion, that will pull more investors back into the marketplace as they will look at historical data and they will determine to themselves that there's a pretty good, ch uh, pretty good chance that the bear market lows are in 
And now they can reallocate capital that's just sitting on the sidelines back into the asset because that's what money managers do. Money managers manage money. So if they're not in the markets because of a bear market, they're just waiting for specific data, whatever their strategy is. Once that data is represented uh, significantly, then they will reallocate that capital right back into an asset that shows the potential for growth because that's how you make money investing. You invest in the assets that show potential for growth and a 24% bullish candle to the upside is not a dead cat bounce, especially when you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks of time since the big down move happened. That's not a dead cat bounce. This is accumulation. This is capitulation. You typically have accumulation after capitulation. So as long as we don't make new fresh bear market lows, because of historical data, we know Bitcoin usually doesn't go back to the lows once the low is put in then you can start allocating a little bit of capital to bitcoin then you can start buying it and when should you buy it red weeklies buy it on sunday when it closes red make sure you're using a stop loss don't use leverage like these are all safe things to do these are all safe ways to wait to get your money back into the asset without buying a potential top. Because nobody wants to buy the top. It's never fun when you buy the very high of a bullish candle and then watch week after week as your P&L just continues to go down, down, down. So let's wait for that pullback. I go live twice a week, every Tuesday, every Thursday for the public. So if you want to know what I'm thinking, all you got to do is pop over here, 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, a.m. Eastern time. We try to go live about 30 minutes before the market opens. Uh, and it, and then because we, we're looking for day trading opportunities. Um, but then sometimes those day trading opportunities, which here was a day trading opportunity, that's why we took it. We were taking it based on a liquidation break strategy. Basically, it was just a day trade. As it moved up, we took profits. We moved our stops to break even. Now we have a small portion of the original position still in the marketplace. But that small portion of the original position is still a pretty good sized position because getting in at the very low like that allows us to have a very small margin of or a very narrow stop loss with a very high rate of margin if you will very high rate of leverage so even though 70 percent of the position is closed and we have realized those gains already there still is 30 percent of that original position still open in the market with the leverage still applied. So that position over time will generate a ton of money, right? And we're going to re-add on the way up. We're going to dollar cost average as this thing makes higher highs and higher lows, if this thing makes higher highs and higher lows. But I think this is a very significant a uh, very significant event. I absolutely believe that you are going to see Bitcoin continue higher. But first, it must find support before it will continue higher. It's not just going to print green candles for the rest of its life. All right, It would absolutely be nice if it did that, but it just won't. All right. So we'll wait on a couple of those blue candles because as you can see on my chart, blue is for bearish, right? Green go up, blue go down. So we, we want to buy on those blue candles once support has been clearly identified 
And once Price has clearly shown us that support is holding, then we can take the chance and apply some risk there. There is no daily candles that I can give you, no levels yet, because they didn't make any on the way up. It just shot straight up for multiple, multiple days in a row. So, I mean, any one of these daily opens or closes has the potential to be support. We just have to wait for price to show us that support. This could be the support, right? I don't know. It's still bullish, even though it's gotten that bearish reaction after liquidating the quarter highs. You're still green on the day. And you got, you know, a few hours left on this day before this thing changes. So we shall see how it closes. I would love to see a couple bearish candles. Then I would love to see those bearish candles show me that support is being held. And then I can look to buy any retest of that specific objective price. And then use a stop just in case I'm wrong. It's going to be great. It's going to be jazzy. It's going to be fantastic. Wick up, wick down. Yeah. Experience, wisdom. Wow. Yeah. It's all it takes, guys. That's it. It just takes time, experience. There's an old proverb, an old saying that 10,000 hours of doing one thing will make you a master at it. Well, I have been looking at charts for well over 10,000 hours. Seems like I've been looking at this chart for over 10,000 hours this week. <laughs> but there's not 10,000 hours in a week. All right. So that's what we're watching. That's what we're waiting on. We can't really do anything until that occurs. So... We'll look for other opportunities elsewhere across the marketplace. These are a few things that I have been watching uh, for potential opportunities. So here, let's go discuss that. Uh, right now, you can see that NZD CAD. We trade all asset classes on this channel. We, we have a huge focus on Bitcoin and cryptos. But Forex is my forte, if you will. Stocks and options, Forex, that's, that's generally what I'm trading uh, when there's nothing to do on Bitcoin or in the crypto market. So there's opportunities just like in Bitcoin in this asset class as well. Uh, right now, you can see that NZD CAD, we are watching this for a potential short opportunity as long as it stays under zero spot eight six zero two seven uh simply because that is the yearly opening range and we know that assets will tend to trend away from this price you can see that you've already tested it once here today actually at four o'clock so the, the London session may have made the high of day on this asset, but we don't know yet, right? We don't know yet. Currently, intraday resistance is holding, but you are trading above it. You did get some CPI data on CAD. I haven't looked at the data, so I don't know if it's good news or bad news for the Canadian dollar. But if the Canadian dollar gets stronger this asset will go down if the canadian dollar gets weaker this asset will go up so you know let's just give it a couple days to suss out direction for us because it will i promise it'll either start closing daily candles above this yellow line or it'll keep closing daily candles under it if it continues to close daily candles under it We'll look for a short opportunity on it. Uh, but, you know, you, you can see that, that it, it has been pretty damn bullish up until this point. Uh, this is October 2022, right? So for the last, what, couple quarters, this thing has been screaming to the upside. 
Here's what the chart looks like on a quarterly basis. Quarterly basis just meaning each candlestick is three months worth of price data. So, yeah, last quarter of 2022 was a very bullish one. So is this going to be the low of the quarter? Are we going to see this asset trend higher this year? We'll know. We'll know here in a few few weeks to a month, I would say. Um, yeah, if it fails to get above that, then, then we're going to look to short it. We're going to look to fade this move. Because longer term, it typically is like floating to the downside. Um, here's your yearly chart. You can see that bunch of downside wicks here. This is a very choppy asset. It's not one of my favorite assets to trade. The only reason it's on the watch list is because it is retesting that yearly opening range right now. Same goes for pound CAD. Like a lot of your CAD pairs are right now flirting with their yearly opens. And we pay attention to those prices because we know they are very significant. All right. Very significant. So here is the weekly chart. Let's see if we've liquidated that. If that's a weekly high right there and we just liquidated it today, we may see this thing go lower from here. Uh, and it was, is. All right. So. That's the highest point in this price action here. So that means we know for a fact the next weekly high to liquidate is all the way up at one spot six six eight nine nine. And we know for a fact that the lowest place to liquidate is at one spot six three oh seven four. What does that tell us? Well, if it fails to close above the yearly opening range, we will have downside targets of one spot six three zero seven four on the pound CAD. Like I said, a lot of these assets are going to have CAD in the title. A lot of these assets are going to have CAD in the title. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. My girl just came back home and I had some questions I needed to ask her. Okay, so yeah, Euro Aussie, uh, pretty much the same scenario. We are trading really close to that yearly open. And you're going to see a theme here because, like I said, one thing you will find on this channel is consistency. I do not change my strategy from one week to the next just depending on what the market's doing. We stay consistent, we stay profitable, right? Here's your yearly opening range on the Euro Aussie. You can see that you opened, traded down. That's a pretty large expansion from the yearly opening range. However, support on a daily closing basis is being held up by this boy right here. This, this boy, this bearish boy right there. You can see that it was tested yesterday and is currently holding. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch resistance moving forward. And there is your resistance boy. You can see yesterday as well that held as resistance. So the operating range on your Aussie one spot five five seven six five on the sell side on the buy side 
one spot five four eight oh six that means you will be a, either a seller here or a buyer there the direction of your trade is it doesn't matter to me that's what you're going to be all right if you think it's going to go higher than you want to be a buyer you want to be a buyer as close to that price as possible as long as you're not closing any dailies below it because if you do that that means you're breaking down this was support, then you closed under it here, right? You did create a or set a resistance there on this breakdown that you had this dead cat bounce. That dead cat bounce is closing prices, one spot five, five, eight, four, five. As you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six days. You traded above that price with the inability to close above. That is the marketplace telling us that there is supply setting at or above one spot five, five, eight, four, five. With this general reaction that we're seeing today, I would probably, and the fact that we're trading under the yearly opening range, I would probably rather be a seller. So I can't take a short on it now. I can't chase price because the move is already happening. But had I been watching this, I could have potentially taken a short on it earlier today, right? Depending on, you know, what the intraday price action looks like. Because that matters too when taking intraday trades. So yeah, um, that's that. Let's go look at the great big S&P 500. Thank you guys for staying with me with the rants. I really appreciate it because, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? We got to get those rants out. We can't keep them bottled up. So there is a clear and obvious trend to the downside here. This is why everybody is still so uber, 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 uber bearish on risk and still looking for an 08 crash. I made a bet with my, um, with my channel members and Patreons yesterday that I think by the time we get to this right here, this, this date, March the 6th, I think we will have taken out this high and this trend line to the upside. Now, I obviously could be wrong, but according to what I see in the price, I think you're going to see this thing trade higher. Now, the talking heads in Bloomberg and CNBC and Fox Business all think, well, first of all, they're not giving any opinion on any directions right now because they want to wait to quarter two because obviously there is a a recession looming out there but at the same time at in quarter two they'll have more data then they maybe maybe they'll start helping you with a directional bias i'm going to do that with you right now my directional bias on this asset is and has been since this low was put in to be a buyer of support and as of right now, that is still the thing to be. Here is support, or was support, right there. You can see that you broke down below support here. And the very next day, what did you do? You almost printed a bullish reversal candle. This is called an engulfing or also known as an outside day reversal pattern. It did not make a bearish, I mean, a bullish engulfing or an outside day because it did not take out the previous day's low, but it was very close, very close. Um, so you essentially made this candle a trap. Whenever there is a trap on the chart and we see the trap, we always revert back to the original support. And if you can see here, that was the original support. Look what happened right here, folks. That would have been the place to be a buyer. And since that happened, what happened? You ran down. You took out that day's low. That's a liquidation break. We liquidated. Then we broke out 
up to the upside. That was also on Friday, January the 6th. So that's a nice move up. And so far, we've seen bullish continuation from that move. Now, people are looking to be a seller here, once again, because they like to keep with the trend, first and foremost, and they think the sky is falling, and we're going to see an 08-style crash. I am not among those people. Uh, you are trading above the 618 retracement from this main swing high to this main swing low, so if you keep doing this, uh, you're going to get a short squeeze because people are going to load up short right here. They're going to see this as a selling opportunity. Um, I just closed out Thinkorswim, so I can't show you what's going on with the expected move, but it, it, it's not that important. I know the, the options market is pricing in a higher week. So the, the options market thinks that, that this week is going to close higher than last week. So we shall see if it does or not. We do have um, a supply zone right there. So that's going to act as a potential resistance level at 4027. But as I was saying before I got off topic and distracted with my HDA, <laughs> is um yeah this is going to cause people to be a, a seller but the talking heads on bloomberg cnbc and fox business are all saying that they think the market's probably going to trade sideways anywhere from 3500 to 4100 and that's probably what's going to happen through q1 and they could be right right i hope they're wrong but they could be right Right there where my cursor or crosshair is, is $4,000. You can see this supply zone is at forty twenty seven, So not much further above four grand. So this could act as resistance. It absolutely could. Coming back into trend line resistance as well. Trend line resistance as well. But let's use the line chart too because some analysts do not care about wicks. If we do it like that, you can see we have already broken out above this downtrend. So be careful looking for new shorts down here. I think you should have been a buyer around 38.45. Why do I believe you should have been a buyer around 38.45? It is the yearly opening range. And as long as you are trading above the yearly opening range, that means you are bullish on the year, on the quarter, and on the month. Therefore, the near-term monthly, quarterly, and yearly trend is bullish. So look for support to be a buyer. Do not buy it here. Do not be a buyer here because you are coming into resistance, which could potentially be resistance. So we need to watch support. The near term, the very near term current supports that we have for the daily, 39.90 is the first one. I don't like that one because it's so high up on the ladder, um, but I doubt you pull all the way back to 38.93.91 either. So, Maybe this holds us support. Maybe it doesn't. We'll see moving forward. We need more data. We get more data. Each day we get a closure that gives us more data and then that helps us to make better decisions moving forward. But we do have that. We do have that. Today is looking like it wants to be an upswing day. Here's what your hourly intraday looks like. Two pretty good sized candles here. And you did liquidate this swing high. So you are seeing a little bit of resistance up there, which is normal. Anytime you liquidate a weekly swing high, you're, you're definitely going to have sellers jumping into the marketplace, whether they're closing bullish positions or taking new short positions. It doesn't really matter. It just means there's supply above $4,000.
a lot of people are going to be looking to short 4K. All right? So we don't necessarily want to be a buyer around 4K. Um, but I don't, condo I don't condone being a seller there either. If you want to be a seller there, be a seller there. It's your money. Do what you want to do with it. I'm just giving you my opinion here. Um, but I'm going to be watching for support to be a buyer. Same goes for Bitcoin. I would love to see today be bearish. I would love to see a big bearish day on Bitcoin. Because a big bearish day would suck in all those uber bears and give us the liquidity that we need to get up higher. All right? So that's what we want. Uh, two places, once again, to look for potential support, 39.90 and then 38.91. Um, before we end the stream, I'm not going to end it just yet, but we will wrap it up soon. Um, I use BitGet. If you're in the U.S., unfortunately, you cannot use BitGet anymore uh, because of U.S. regulations, thanks to FTX. FTX screwed a lot of people. Um either out of money or not, right? Either way, FTX screwed a lot of people. And it screwed U.S. citizens from using BitGet. And BitGet's the cheapest, as far as fees goes, platform to trade on. Now, if you are trading on BitGet and have been on BitGet for, since before December, you're fine. You're still allowed to you're still going to be able to operate normally as you would any other time. They're just not taking any new U.S. clients at this point in time. But anybody else in the world, you can use BitGet. It's the, uh, the platform that I use to execute my trade entries on. They have the inverse swap contract for Bitcoin, and that's what I love to trade the most because it allows me to accumulate more Bitcoin, there is a, dis a link in the description. Please make sure you use referral code XTSC. That is X-Ray Tango Sierra Charlie. And thank you in advance. All right, moving forward. Let's check the poll. I don't even know how to check it. Um, I did say, do you think the lows are in? 55% of you, 94, 95 votes. Wow. We had almost 100 people in here today. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, thank you. Um, 95 people voted, and 55% of you think that it is. 45% of you think that it's not. That's a pretty split poll. Uh, 100 people, almost half. It's almost split right down the middle, which is good. That's good. That's what we like right there. Because when one side is overwhelmingly, you know what I'm saying, the answer, then typically the market's going to go in the opposite direction. So right now, that looks good. Looks good. I would be upset if 90% um, of you thought it was in. <laughs> Not upset, just a little worried. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you guys. I'm messing with you. Messing with you. I like to joke around. Shoot the shit. We don't take nothing too serious here. After all, if you can't have fun with what you're doing, what's the point in doing it? All right? I love my job. I don't even call it a job, but whatever it is, I love it. Love it. All right. So Bitcoin's looking like it's wanting to be a down day today, which would be good. Like I said, I would love to see about three or four of these bad boys and even a couple big ones. Uh, I don't want to see us get lower than this right here, though. So 19,423, I would love to see the brakes squeak right there. That's where I would love to see support come in, uh, as that is quarterly demand. So I'd love to see that act as support if we do get the pullback. Um, if we do get the pullback, I still see value at Bitcoin just under 20 Gs. I do. 
I think Bitcoin will be trading for much more than 20 grand in the next 10 years. I think Bitcoin will be trading for insane prices above six figures. I do. I believe it. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's just what I believe will happen because of the way that, that, that it was designed and invented. If it works out the way that it's supposed to work, price will inherently over time just go up because of the way it was built, right? That's why people love Bitcoin. That's why you have value in Bitcoin. And that's why people see it as a store of value. It's a store of value. It's not an inflation hedge. We know that because inflation is what caused it, this thing to have a bear market. Well, that's not true. Monetary policy caused the bear market, but it was because of inflation that monetary policy changed. But you do not have to wait on the Fed to pivot before you become a buyer on the asset because the market is forward looking. The market is going to put in the lows long before the Fed pivots. The lows will be in. I promise you that. The market just knows these things. All right. The market knows everything. Um, so it'll it'll have already put in the lows by the time the Fed pivots. Uh, we do know that the Fed is likely, or let me say this, the market is pricing in a very, very high probability that we're going to see a 25 basis point rate hike at the next FOMC meeting. If I could get my internet to work again, I will show you that chart and viewers beware as it is a very bright screen. I hate bright screens. That's why I keep everything in dark mode, um, but it's having trouble pulling it up. Once it pulls it up, I will show you. We do have uh, the next FOMC in 15 days. Three hours, 11 minutes, and 48 seconds. And like I said, the market's pricing in this right here. 96.2% that we're going to go up 25 basis points. So, you know, 25 is less than 50. So if the Fed does do a 25 basis point rate hike, then that means they're going to be slowing the rate at which they are hiking. And that is very good news for risk assets. Risk assets love lower interest rates, but they don't need low interest rates in order for the market to be bullish. There has been bull markets in the past in high rate interest rate environments, okay? The Fed has been messing with interest rates since 2008, either raising them or lowering them. And the markets typically still float to the upside eventually, right? Once inflation is under control, and we know that they have a 2% target, Right now, the last CPI print was a 6.5. That's probably why you got this big, gigantic move up, as that was one of the biggest drops um, on CPI that we've had since the 9.1 print. So that in itself has caused a lot of capital to rotate back into Bitcoin, which is beautiful, right? You can see that capital rotation happening here. We were looking for that capital rotation to start happening before this based on the dollar having its big massive pullback. There was a catalyst to that dollar, big dollar pullback too, and it had a lot to do with the Japanese yen. We knew that the BOJ was going to be selling dollars to prop up their currency because they can't let their currency run completely into the dirt. Right, they got to slow it down. 
So that's why we shorted the dollar where we shorted it. We shorted it on this day right here based on a liquidation of the previous week's high. That's what prompted our entry. That's why we top ticked the USD JPY. So if you want to catch trades like that, make sure you show up here every Tuesday and Thursdays at around 9 o'clock. Let me answer some of these questions and we will wrap this baby up. Bitcoin has old daily res at 220402. That's around where it might meet that important trend line. Yeah, it could. Is DCA on Bitcoin in the end of the red week still valid way to DCA? Yeah, it is on in a bull market, right? I don't know if I necessarily... I stopped doing it a long time ago. In the bear market, once I realized that that bear market was could potentially have some legs. In other words, if if that bear market could potentially get back down into 74 and 84% losses, I, I didn't want to DCA that way anymore. But yeah, if, if Bitcoin starts to become bullish, uh, yeah, red weeklies, buy a little bit here and there. Little bit, little bits. Don't put your entire life savings into it, expecting it to go up because you could get burned that way. Make sure you're only investing with the amount of money that you don't care to lose. Keep that in mind. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you could you could throw a little bit of your paycheck in there on red weeks as long as the thing is moving slowly to the upside. Now, it will bring your cost basis up with it as price does move up, but you're never going to catch the low. And if you do, it's it's only going to happen once or twice in your life, right? It's not, like, it's not like I can top tick everything. I don't top tick everything, right? We I missed the USDJPY breakout to the upside. Even though we were expecting that to be a major market turn, we missed the opportunity. We missed it. We were waiting for a specific technical setup that never occurred. Therefore, we missed that trade. So I can occasionally top and bottom tick trades, but it doesn't happen Often it happens not often at all. Most of the time you're going to be buying supports. You want to buy off support in an uptrend and you want to sell off resistance in a downtrend. That's essentially the rules you want to live by in a trending environment. If you're not in a trending environment, if you're in a chopping environment, a sideways marketplace, you want to look to be a seller at resistance and a buyer at support. Still, I guess the rules do still apply. <clears throat> but that's about all I got, right, for you guys as far as as far as what we're looking for. We, we just got to get Bitcoin a few days. You can see that the dollar is potentially finding a little bit of support down here. Right now, there, there is a pretty decent level down there that it is finding support off of. And it is monthly support right there. And just to show you how these objective price points work and how accurate they are and why I am able to top and bottom tick these trades is this is objective support on the dollar, 101 spot 782. You can see that wick right there. Booyah. Traded right into that support. That's where you got the bounce. If we hover over the mouse, you will see that low comes in at 101 spot. 773. One cent away from calling the exact low on that candle there. So back test it. Don't take my word for it. Don't believe anybody that you follow or subscribe to. You get what they have to say. Then you go test it to see if they're even telling the truth or not. If they want you to pay $10,000 before they'll even help you, just get away from them. <laughs> just leave them alone. 
They're not going to help you, even if you pay them. They don't, they're not there to help you. They're there to convert you as a sale. All right? As a sale. But the dollar's been bearish for four months straight. One, two, three, four. So as far as being short dollar, the trade to be short dollar was up here. Now we got to let this thing find support, then slowly trade up, and we want to see it find resistance, preferably around 103.49, uh, as that is this month's open plus the yearly open. So hopefully it finds resistance there and we get another down impulse. Uh, but we will see. Time will tell. If it wants to find support a little bit higher, that would be good too. As I am short the dollar and I would love to stick in that position for the, for, for the duration of time. Because that's how investing works. Especially if you catch the top of a near-term reversal. If it ends up being a massive reversal that lasts for years, you couldn't get a better position. All right. <clears throat> so that's so that's what we're doing. We're just we're just kind of in no man's land. Uh there wasn't really an opportunity on Bitcoin to take today other than looking for that that rejection, but I had already taken the long, so I wouldn't have been on board with that trade anyway. And you can see that uh, even though you did reject, it's not a massive rejection. So Bitcoin might find support up at the highs. Um, where do we think pulls back to? Are we looking to buy again at about 19,500? Yeah. I'm looking to be a buyer about 19,423 if and only if there is clear and obvious support being formed there. I will let you know, Kathy, you're in the Discord. You will know, I promise. I will let you guys know when I'm looking to be a buyer again. I'm not just going to spring it on you after like I do so many times. My Discord is not a signal service. They know that in there. So if if you're looking to get into it because you think I'm going to give you trades all the time, that's not the way it works. I teach you how to fish, but you have to then go fish. I'm not going to go fishing for you. Um, but I do occasionally post trade entries before they happen. And I will on that one. I will let you know when I'm looking to be a buyer again. At what price? Once I have seen support and I feel good about the support, I will give you the exact price to look to be a buyer. I promise. All right. <clears throat> Just in terms of candlesticks, moving in opposite direction to real move, is this a consideration for you on the yearly or even quarterly? This like making the high a week on Tuesday by spot buys. All I can tell you, Mr. Run DMC 555, is you need to go back and back test it, right? Especially on Bitcoin. Like, we've been over it on, on inside of Discord and on the members only streams. Do it on all the assets. Just go mark your, mark your yearly opens, switch to a daily time frame, and then just look how historical data reacts to those levels. Those levels will usually or oftentimes act as future resistance and support, not even in that year. For instance, I've seen uh, 2021's yearly open be perfect resistance on an asset that's still trending lower in 2022, right? Same goes for 2019, 2019's yearly open. I've seen it act as support or resistance in the future, like two, three years later, right? They're big technical levels. So people will be looking to place trades at those areas. You just have to back test it yourself. You have to back test it yourself. But yeah, typically we want the high or low of year to be in by at least Q2, the end of Q2. 
Rather, it would be in by the end of Q1. We would rather the, the yearly uh, low to be set by Q, Q by the open of Q2. Because generally, like, like here, I'll show you on this example real quick, and then we'll wrap this up completely. Let me just run through the rest of these questions real quick. Chris, I will take a look at AVAX before we wrap it up. Yeah, that's usually where you will get the best wisdom from my channel is from the rants. And that, that's not even a, a joke. That's the, that's the true and honest, um, true and honest here. All right, so this is a, the reason I'm using the USD CAD is because it's a perfect example of what you're asking, right? All right, so here, for 2022, right there was the yearly opening range. You can see that for the full first quarter, 2022, you traded up above for a little while, but then you got under it, and then you closed under it, all right? Now, there was an objective level of support to look for entries if you were bullish, Moving on into 2022, which you should have been because, you know, especially if you're following me, because we nailed, we, we pretty much caught the bottom of the dollar. But anyways, for, for Q1 2022, you closed bearish. Then at the start of Q2, you traded down to objective quarterly support right there. And bounced and broke out above your yearly opening range. And then Q2, for the rest of Q2, you were a bullish expansion rip to the upside. Q3 starts, opens, you get a slight pullback, right? Find support somewhere. And then all of Q3, just a massive expansion up. And then this is Q4. Boom. Pull back. Not so much a blow off, but still, nonetheless, a pullback. So if we're going to see more upside continuation on USD CAD, maybe look for a purge of this swing low, which is Q4 2022. Maybe we trade down, take out this low. Maybe then it finds support, closes. And then in Q2, if we get back above that, similar to what we did here, then we will look for this to be support moving forward for another move higher. If that happens, then more than likely Bitcoin's going to be in trouble. But on USD CAD, it's not so much because... This could that could happen just from Canadian dollar weakness, and Canadian dollar weakness really isn't going to affect Bitcoin, right? USD strength will affect Bitcoin, but Canadian Canadian dollar weakness alone isn't going to affect you. It's not going to make USD strong as AF, not like like a terrible weak euro would. Right. That's why I said I'm more concerned about euro. And if it breaks down, then I am anything else. If the euro breaks down, the euro is the most heaviest weighted currency inside the dollar basket. So if the euro breaks down, that is enough to cause severe dollar strength. And that is enough to put uh, a lot of selling pressure back onto Bitcoin. So we will be keeping an eye on the Euro USD for sure. But yeah, yeah. For the whole first quarter of 2022, you were under the yearly opening range. 
And we know for a fact that 2022 was a very bullish year for the dollar. So, yeah, we typically want to see the first original move be either the fake out move or at the very least come back in, test that support, show there's demand there, and then trade back away. So it's just a benchmark on on where to look, right? It's a benchmark to give you a bias moving forward for the year. If you're trading above the yearly open, you're typically looking for bullish trades, bullish directional entries. If you are trading under the yearly opening range, you are typically looking to sell resistances, expecting that yearly trend to continue. Hopefully that answers your question. And then let's go look, am I drunk? Why do you ask that? Why do people keep asking me if I am drunk? No, I am not drunk. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning here. I have a rule. I wait till 5. <laughs> no, I'm not drunk, dude. <laughs> I talk slow. I slur my words occasionally. It's all good. Doesn't mean I'm drunk. Not drunk. Not drunk. Um, if you want to add a free indicator using trading view that will automatically mark the yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, Oakley, every asset search DM DWMY works great. Yeah, I know Mario. I I just I prefer to do things my way. You know what I'm saying? But if anybody else in the in the chat wants to do that. There, Mario has a perfect proposition for you. Apparently, there is an indicator that will automatically mark the daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly candles for you. So go check that out. I'll give you some help. All right. All right. So let's go back and check out AVAX, and then we'll wrap it up. I just talk slow, my man. That's all. I'm a very laxed type of guy. I live in the slow lane, if you will. I'm from the old school. Um, Yeah, you're, you're trading above resistance currently, but you haven't liquidated Q4 yet. It did have a nice pop, but like I said yesterday in yesterday's stream, these things are typically going to follow Bitcoin. They're typically going to do what Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin has a big bearish year, AVAX will too. They're, they're, they don't trade 100% correlated, but they're very, very close. This is a massive move. Would I be a buyer up here on AVAX? Absolutely not. Look how oversold, overbought you are. You're very overbought. You need a pullback. Wait for a pullback into support. There's actually a really good level to watch on AVAX for that potential support. $15.45. Right? So if you trade back down to here, see if this area holds a support. As long as you're not closing daily candles under $15.45, might be a good spot to look for bullish entries. I don't know anything about Avalanche as far as their white papers are concerned. I don't know what the company does, what they offer, what their plans are for the future. Are they a good investment? Do I suspect they will have growth in the future or any of that? I don't know. But as far as just looking at the price chart, yeah, it looks like it's just it's getting some of that Bitcoin momentum right now. All right. But it does have a legit place to look for potential support moving forward at 1545. Thank you guys so much for being here. We will be live again on Thursday, same time, same place, same drunk time, same drunk channel. 1545, maybe I should change the name to Drunk Trade Talk because you're like the fourth person I asked that in the last five streams. 
I don't know. Maybe it's the medication I'm taking. I have no clue. Maybe it's making me slur my speech a little bit more and I don't realize it. Who knows? It's not that big of a deal. What's important is that you should understand that that what you get from this channel is pure signal, my friend. No bullshit. It's straight up great information that if you learn what I'm teaching, you will be able to enhance your trading to a much higher place than it is right now. If you're like just a 50-50 trader, you will up that. You will get better. Your trading will get better. That I guarantee. Thank you once again for being here. Make sure you guys trade safe. Make sure you trade smart. And as always, happy trading, everybody.